And now, on this uh, projection, there's a green handle on the top and bottom. If I grab those handles, I can stretch out uh, my... It looks like I'm stretching the texture, but I'm actually stretching out the UVs. So I'm just going to make that where it looks good. And then if you see the other direction, you'll see some red handles. If I grab those red handles, I can stretch it the other way. So I'm just going to line that up till it, it looks right. And there we go. F8, go back to object mode, and our label is done. All right, now if you need to pull that projection back up again, uh, all you need to do is select your label, right-click, and you'll see a menu pop up. In that menu, you'll see uh, UV sets. If you put your cursor over UV sets, you'll see another little tiny menu pop up, and at the bottom of it, you should see Polysil Proj 1, so Poly -cyl uh, Cylindrical Projection 1. And if you click on that, then it pulls your projection back up. Okay? All right, F8, go back to object mode. All right, just so I don't have to redo all that again, I'm just going to go ahead and do another save. There we go. Back to my channel box. Let's do the uh, bottle now. So I'm going to go back to the Windows. Rendering Editor is Hypershade. For our bottle, I am going to use a Fong E. There's different. There's actually some built-in glass uh, that we can use. Um, but I'm going to use a Fong E, and the reason being is because once we finish... Uh, doing a, a modeling our bottle and rendering it out. I am going to um, tell you about a tutorial that is in the Maya Help that is very useful. So you can take your wine bottle one step further and add some caustics to get a more realistic look. All right, so Fong E. I'm just going to click on Fong E over here in the left-hand column. It puts it down here in our work area. Again, I'm going to double-click it. It pulls up the attributes over here on the right. First thing I'm going to do is rename it. MAT underscore bottle. And again, you can name yours whatever you want. All right, color, uh, we're not going to use that. Right, we're actually going to add color to the transparency instead. Uh, diffuse, don't even worry about that. Don't worry about any of this stuff. Uh, down here where it says roughness, um, we don't want a rough bottle. We want a smooth bottle because glass is smooth. But anytime I use zero, it just doesn't quite look right for some reason. I don't know if it's just my version of Maya. Uh, so I always just bump it up just a little bit. Okay, highlight size. Uh, we don't want a really big highlight like a plastic ball or something. This is glass, so we want some really fine highlights. So I'm going to bump this down. Uh, I want my highlights to be really bright to stand out. So I'm going to bump these up. Reflectivity. Um, 0.5 to me always just looks like a mirror. So I want, you know, glass is very reflective, but I don't want it quite like a mirror. So I'm just going to bump that down a little bit. And down here, ray trace options. Uh, you should see that in your list. Just expand that and put a check mark where it says refractions. All right, if you look at our wine bottle from, you know, all the way through our wine bottle, you're going to be looking through four different surfaces. Okay, so if you're looking from right to left through our bottle, you're going to go through the right outer surface, the right inner surface, then you're going to go through the bottle and hit the left inner surface and then the left outer surface. So the light's got to go through four surfaces to go all the way through our bottle. So we want this refraction limit from uh, six, we want it to be at least four. So you want it to be at least four. Now the default was six, so you can leave it at six if you want. Uh, six or four is going to be the same results. So you just got to make sure it's at least uh, four so it can go all the way through your bottle. Um, refractive index, uh, we'll just see what it looks like. We might have to change that. Uh, reflection limit, go ahead and just change it to 2. You can change it to 4 if you want. Uh, just play around to get, to get the look you want. I know 2 looks good uh, when I do glass for me. And that's it for that except adding some color. Um, now, to just add some color, this uh, transparency. Uh, let me just show you this first. Let's go ahead and I'm going to middle mouse drag my material over to our bottle. So middle mouse drag to our bottle. It puts it on our bottle. And again, uh, if you don't have this down there, uh, you can always just middle mouse drag it from this upper section. So up, this upper section, you'll see some tabs, materials, textures, utility, lights, cameras. Just make sure you have the materials tab selected. And you'll see your materials. And then you can just middle mouse drag onto your objects. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. We don't really need that anymore. Um, 
All right, so transparency for my bottom material. If I move it all the way to the right, you'll see our bottle goes completely transparent. If I move it all the way to the left, it's completely opaque. Um, if we click on this transparency, we can add colors. So if you look up here in our, at our attributes, you'll see a material sample, and you'll see it change as we change our colors. So that's basically what our bottle's gonna look like up there. Um, instead of just adding a color, I'm gonna do something a little fancy. So let's go ahead and X out of that. We're gonna use uh, several colors for our wine bottle instead of just one solid color. So what we do that is, uh, where your transparency is, to the far right, we're gonna click on the button with the checkerboard. That same dialog box uh, will pop up, but instead of clicking on File, we're gonna click on Ramp. Down here where it says Ramp, and click on Ramp. And then in the Attribute Editor, you'll see this, uh, this big color swatch. And right now it's got three colors loaded on mine, blue, green, and red. And picture this kind of like our bottle. The top of the bottle is blue, the middle of our bottle is green, and the bottom of our bottle is red. Um, to get rid of colors, you just click on these boxes on the right. So if I want to get rid of this green, I can click on the green square over here on the right. And it gets rid of it. Um, you can click on, like, I can click on this blue circle to move it where I want it. I can click on this red circle and then drag it to where I want it. If you want to add more colors, just click inside and you can just add more colors. So again, to delete colors, just click on those squares. And then to change colors, which we want to do, um, I'm going to make this a green bottle since our Fresh Maya uh, is kind of a green theme. So I'm going to click on the circle. And now down here where the selected color is, I can just click on that color and I can just add whatever color I want. So I'm going to add kind of a greenish, kind of a yellowish green color. Kind of make it a little bit dark, except I'm going to click on this uh, red circle over here because I'm going to change it. Click on the color swatch, and now I can make it kind of a yellowish green, but I'll make it kind of uh, pretty dark too. Except, all right, now this right here would be like our bottle. So the top of our bottle is kind of greenish, and then it gets dark at the bottom. I'm going to actually add a um, a noticeable line here and that's going to act as our wine level. Now if you're using another kind of program where you're going to do an animation with liquid coming out, you wouldn't want to do that. You just probably want to keep it all one color. Uh, but since I'm not going to do any kind of uh, fluid animation or anything, I'm just going to make it look like there's wine in here by adding another color. So I'm just going to click in this box, click the circle, and I'm going to make this darker. Pull these closer, uh, click accept pull these closer together and that's going to be our wine level. And I'm going to add another color kind of towards the middle. Just kind of brighten that up. So it's kind of got like the light shining through the uh, the wine. So it'll make our bottle look a little uh, more interesting. And let's see what that looks. That's probably a little light at the top. So I'm going to darken that up a little bit. All right, let's see what this uh, looks like. All right, before we render it out, let's uh, make a few adjustments here. We need a light, and we need a, uh, a room to put it in. Uh, I'm just going to push this out of the way. We could also just add it to a layer and hide the layer if we wanted to. Um, let's go and add a couple of lights. I'm going to add up here on my shelf. I'm going to click on the renderings tab. I click on Spotlight. Okay. I'm going to press the letter T so I get these two handles. Uh, one handle moves the light and the other one moves to where the light's uh, shining at, or where it's pointing. So I'm going to move where it's pointing at into our bottle. That way, no matter where I move my light, it's always going to uh, shine on my bottle. All right, that's probably good there. All right, let's um, create a box. So let me create a polygon cube. Put my bottle inside of it. Don't have to be so tall. All right, let's go to a wireframe so we can see this. I'm just going to move the bottom. Whoops. Use my move tool. Um, now I can move this box without grabbing the handle simply by as long as I had the move tool selected. I can press the shift button down and hold it down, and now I can middle mouse drag uh, up 
and it will move the box up. So I can actually zoom in here and make adjustments without having to uh, grab the manipulator handle. Okay, so I got the box lined up with our bottle. And we got our light in there. All right. We're inside of our box here. I'm going to press the number 7 key. That's going to allow us to see what our light's doing. Uh, a couple ways we can select our light is you can go to your window, down to Outliner, and you can select um, lights and cameras and everything else from your Outliner. Another way you can do it is uh, you can go up to your Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade, and those tabs up here, you get Materials, well you can click on Lights, and there's our light. So you can just double click it, and that opens up the attributes for it.